Thanks for joining us here on The City Considers at Davis Media Access. This is a show we produce monthly with volunteer assistance, and it is a show in which we take a look at things that are happening at the city council level and the city staff <coughs> level. And today I am really happy to have as my guest Diane Paro, who's the city's chief innovation officer. Welcome. Thank you, Otto. Now, I think many people in the community know you from your work. You worked for mm -hmm. many years as deputy to County Supervisor Don Saylor, yes. and before that, the Yellow Visitors Bureau. You've been around for a while. Yes, I love Davis. Right, <laughs> and you took on uh, this new challenge in 2015, correct? Mm -hmm. Right, just yeah, a little so over two years ago. A couple years mm -hmm. ago. Great. Mm -hmm. Well, what I remember, the conversation mm -hmm. at that time seemed to be all about, in terms of innovation and economic development, mm -hmm. seemed to be all about the Mace Ranch Innovation Center. Mm -hmm. And then that seemed to quiet down. But just before the show, you were telling me that there was actually s some big uh, uh, forward movement uh, last night. So what's going on with that? Yes, um, thank you for asking. Well, it was interesting because when I started, there were a couple of huge projects in the system, the Mace Ranch Innovation Center and also the Nishi Gateway project. Yeah, right. So two big things that would have ch fairly dramatically changed what commercial uh, space was available in Davis and what we might have to attract the kinds of businesses, startups, entrepreneurs, but also bigger companies right. that are interested in Davis. And um, Nishi Gateway did not pass um, a Measure R vote with the voters. Mm -hmm. And around the same time, the Mace Ranch Innovation Center put their application on hold. So it's not withdrawn, right. it just went on hold. And they were really being very intentional and thoughtful about how they might bring it forward and if they would bring it forward. Mm -hmm. So a uh, number of months have gone by, and last night they made an official request to council, and council did vote to accept their request to move forward with certification of their EIR. And that's a huge milestone. Um, the EIR is the environmental impact report that right. would be required for any project of that size under the California, let's see if I get this right, California <laughs> Environmental Quality Act, the CEQA, which right. everybody calls CEQA. And uh, one, I'll just tell you a funny anecdote. I think the second or third week when I worked for the city, the draft EIR came out. And they said, I hope it's not a big deal, Diane. Could you just check these out? I don't know. People might want to read them. I, I didn't know what that meant. And I imagined myself sitting at a counter and saying, OK, check. This is your copy. Well, the four volumes were heavier than I could carry. <laughs> And it took four volumes. So we'd get this huge box, and I'd check it out to them. Um, one gentleman picked it up on his bicycle. Hmm. And there are people in Davis that did read the entire document. Um, thank goodness they gave comments. Comments were answered in the draft. And then the, the report, final report was issued. Right. And so requests to have it certified is somewhat unusual in that there's not a project active. Mm -hmm. But it's not you know, um, out of the question. So the council took that action last night, and it may, in fact, lead to those applicants reinvigorating their application. But right now, it remains to be seen no if they'll project, do that. But the step they took keeps the possibility alive, essentially. It yeah. does. It does. It was okay. um, a, a shining light from my perspective, because I like to see things in Davis move forward um, as long as they're intentional and as long as they're what the community wants. Sure, and transparent and all of exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So talking about more broadly mm -hmm. about innovation, mm -hmm. for those maybe not following the issue, what is, what is an innovation center? <laughs> well, um, everyone in our entire, gosh, most of Northern California will say, you should be part of our community because we're near UC Davis. Mm -hmm. right? UC Davis is so important in research to the world. Sure. So everyone tries to capitalize on the type of research they're doing, on the spin-offs that will come out, on the amazing, um, they're in, not even just inventing things, but ideas, techniques, changing the world. And um, those, that type of industry often starts out with a, a small, maybe even just a few people in a, in a lab space mm -hmm. or um, an, another, I mean, the, we talk about them being in their garage or in their attic or their bedroom developing apps. So we would like to be able to capture everything from the small startup, which mm -hmm. may be spinning out from UC Davis or maybe other brilliant people who are all around us in our community. Um, but then you need space for what happens next. Right. 
What happens when they get to be 10 employees and they're getting venture capital and now they're actually making money mm -hmm. and now they're contributing to the workforce and they need lawyers and they need a, uh, insurance agents and all the things right. we'd like our uh, business to business community to. So we'd like to be able to keep them. And when we have a huge home run like a Schilling Robotics mm -hmm. or something that is a, a national, national um, expert, but he wants to actually build his facility here. Yeah. We need space for it. And, and we want to be welcoming. And we want to be welcoming. Yeah. So Mace Innovation Center, Mace Ranch Innovation Center, excuse me, would have provided much more of all those types of spaces. Yeah. And it was designed to be the kind of space that is um, geared to networking, to idea sharing, to have open spaces right. where people might gather and it, it was a really great design, and again, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I, it may I don't yet wanna, be. Right. I don't, I don't <laughs> want to make anyone think I'm um, so for it that it should be right. uh, moved forward without the intention that Davis has. But there's, there would still be, on any application that they would be, yeah. bring forward on that space, there would still be a Measure R4 yeah. vote. So the community still has many chances to weigh in. But okay. again, not holding us back right. one tiny baby step forward. Right. Meanwhile, there's Meanwhile. other things happening, and I know uh, we touched, uh, you touched on University Research Park and Sierra Energy Area 52. Yes. So let's talk about those. Um, and another one that I remember today called Inventopia, so that's fun. Inventopia. Inventopia. <laughs> so um, two things sort of happened around the time that Mace Ranch Innovation Center put their project on hold and Nishi was um, known pretty clearly to not be going forward. We changed our strategy pretty dramatically, one, towards business retention, mm -hmm. which means go out and thank all the fantastic businesses we have for right. being in Davis, talk about growth, talk about impediments. So we made that our highest priority. I've been to so many amazing places with our mayor, with our city manager, with Sarah Worley, my colleague, and we thank them first for having their business in Davis, and then we ask them, what's on your mind? Mm -hmm. What can we do to help you? And we have learned important things, and we've taken important steps. But we're talking about employers anywhere from the wardrobe, you mm -hmm. know, a small local dress shop, to Sutter Davis, one of the region's largest, largest health care provider, yeah. mm -hmm. one of our largest employers, mm -hmm. um, the Nugget Markets, where they, they made us lunch. That was one of my good favorite business, uh, mm -hmm. business visits. Um, University Honda we met with, and we learned that this was their 25th year. So we honored them last night at council also for 25 years. Yeah, that's of, something to celebrate. That's amazing. Um, that's success. So we're doing um, a lot of business outreach. And it's not, I don't want you to think that wasn't done at the city before I got there. It's just it does take a lot of time to move forward these big projects. Sure, it takes someone to drive it, too. Right. So yeah. we hunkered down and said, OK, now we do the basics. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, things happen in Davis. Right. Um, you, could, you could put your head down and be disappointed that something didn't happen. And in the meantime, University Research Park used to be called Innerland. It's been here for a long time. Okay. Um, not much attention paid to it. So down on uh, Cowell Boulevard. Research, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. Cowell Research Park Drive. Yeah. It was sold. Mm -hmm. And a new owner who has a ton of energy, Mark Friedman out of Fulcrum Properties, um, some of his business partners are some of our local favorites, Jim Gray, Naz Anvari, and some others. Super energetic, investing in Davis, investing in making University Research Park a, a great home for the kinds of businesses that we, we, we dream to have. We have them. We're keeping them happy. Uh, thanks to them, we have Novazymes in, here, in there. We have um, our own biosciences in there now. Right. We have Blue Oak Energy, I mean, one of the nation's largest um, solar providers. Yeah, it's really become a hub down there. I noticed it's, that. It's fantastic. Recently. So we're, we're so excited to have new owners that are really catering to, again, businesses that have grown up with us in Davis. Yeah. Um, but they're doing investing. They're working with the city. They're working with the developer. And they are, they are going to make enhancements. They're going to have some uh, new and exciting additions to that park. Wonderful. I incrementally and appropriately. But again, yeah. you know, if you can't have the giant um, big park, you have important steps towards well, getting Well, you can start where you are. Which, I, from everything you've just said to me, it sounds like, you know, let's it's build exciting. on what we have. Right. 
and it's right. exciting. Yeah. So tell us about Area 52 and, and the link between Sierra Energy. Right. So um, lots of people who have been in Davis for a long time will remember the Moeller flying car. Yes. Remember yes, the Moeller flying car? Paul Moeller. So another example of a place in Davis that had just been there so long that we stopped paying attention to it. Down on Research Park Drive, mm -hmm. kind of around the bend, um, out of the way. And Mike Hart, who owns Sierra Energy, has a huge vision, big, big vision, lots of success in, in different things, um, mostly energy related. Mm -hmm. And he purchased that mm -hmm. property. And um, as a fun spin on the whole flying car sort of coolness, they called it Area 52. Right, kind of a makerspace, right? Well, yeah. um, University, um, sorry, um, Sierra Energy Research Park is sort of the umbrella, and Area 52 is part of it, but there, there'll be other parts. Yeah. So Area 52 will certainly be like a fun makerspace, tinker space, um, prototyping, but the vision, and I've seen it a couple times, and it's pretty exciting, is that because it's large, I mean, flying car yeah. took up uh, a lot of space, had a wind tunnel in there. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a pretty amazing space. Um, an event center. A place for co-working, um, a place for research labs. Yeah. So you know, engineering labs. This is all um, a bit in the early stages, mm -hmm. because you know some construction will be happening. Um, so again, working yeah. with the city on what those plans look like. But when it um, when it starts it unfolding in phases, it will also be another amazing place. Right for people to land when they want to stay in Davis because of our huge you know, intellectual capital and other things. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and, and so Inventopia, <laughs> Inventopia is a fun um, small version of that which is already open. It's over on Fifth Street, just opened. And it's about 1,000 square feet of co-working, um, maker space. Let's, do some prototyping, let's just do something. Yeah. Let's With a name that sounds out. like it came out of Disneyland. In Ventopia. <laughs> they actually um, had some, some early, early uh, tenants in a, in a different space, but they let them vote. And they came up with Inventopia, which no, I fun. like a yeah. lot. And they're already talking about expanding cool. and uh, what, it, what the next iteration might look like for yeah. them. So um, again, you could rent a bench there to bigger. I mean, yeah. uh, th these are the ways I think we're going to keep Davis progressing and really engaged with the biotech, the yeah. ag tech, the, you know, everything. And we're not going to blow it up. Yeah. We're just going to keep doing it our way. And on that note, we only have a couple minutes oh left. And I want to okay, make sure we fast. touch on broadband <laughs> yes. and the, specifically the, the Broadband Advisory Task Force mm -hmm. the city convened last year on mm -hmm. which I represent, Davis I'm Media so Access. So lucky to have you. And you are a staff liaison Staffer. to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you in one minute encapsulate yes. sort of our yes. work today? Everybody in Davis, every business owner, every uh, resident wants a better broadband. We want it faster. We want it cheaper. Uh, so many smart people here. We needed to come together with the brain power we have in Davis, people like you, Autumn, and figure out how could we do that. Right. So we have a study. Uh, council was forward-thinking enough to fund that. Mm -hmm. We were going to determine the feasibility of broadband for everyone. Right. And uh, until we see the study, I um, don't know the answer, but I know. we're very fortunate to be, again, in the place where we can study it and we can come up with facts yeah. at least to make our next step. I've had a lot of people ask me about it, too, and, mm -hmm. the, and the, one of my replies is that mm -hmm. this is not a quick thing. We are really looking right. at, you know, we're really looking five years out in terms of, uh, mm -hmm. three to five years mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. in terms of developing, figuring out how it's all going to work and, and building it out. And it, it's potentially mm -hmm. a lot of money, too. It's a lot yeah. of money, and uh, what I have to say is if it was going to be easy, it would have been done already. Exactly. And it's so. not easy, but again, very fortunate to be in the kind of city that will fund, study, to even figure out what we should do. Right. Let's figure it out together. Yeah. And I'm grateful to you and the other volunteers. Well, and on, on that note, you know, it meets uh, the fourth Wednesdays at 630 in the conference That's room right. and, Everybody's and welcome. at City <laughs> Hall. And people do. They come by they and they're, they're just interested and they come by and they, they hear what we all have to say. So.
Well, yeah. I know we're getting down to the end of our time. We could That's talk fantastic. for days. We could. But I really mm -hmm. appreciate you coming and sharing an update about the important work you're doing at the city yeah. with our viewers. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to let uh, anyone know who's watching that, of course, you can go to cityofdavis.org and you can type in broadband. You can type in innovation and mm -hmm. you can, you yes. know, get linked up with uh, Diane and the work that uh, is happening at the city. So thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Otto. It was right. fun. Take care. Thanks for tuning in to The City Considers here at Davis Media Access, and we'll see you next time.